Hi, my name is Oliver, and in this tutorial I'll be teaching you how to animate a flying arrow hitting a target in After Effects. So first of all, I have illustrated this target and this arrow, and I've also separated the target into the target itself and the legs. And what we're going to be doing first is animating the position of the arrow so it flies in and hits the target. Therefore, I'll be selecting the arrow, and then I'll have to adjust the anchor point. So if I select the anchor point tool, hold down command or control while dragging, it will just snap. And I want it to be approximately, not all the way towards the end, but at the end of sort of the stick of the arrow. And that will make more sense later on. Now I'll take my selection tool again, select the arrow, and I will select a starting position of the arrow. So this will sort of be out of the composition, maybe down here. Then we can click P to get our position, Right click and separate the dimensions. Now we want to animate both the X and Y position. So just add a keyframe to both of them. And then we maybe want this animation to be roughly eight keyframes. So here we can add an X and Y position keyframe again. Now we can just sort of drag the arrow. So it's in position in the middle of the bullseye. Right now, we also want to add the Y position. So the arrow actually flies up and gravity forces it down. So we go to four keyframes. So this is roughly the middle. And we can just drag the arrow up a bit. And this will turn into an arch when we start easing it. But we don't want there to be an X position in the middle because the X position is actually constant. And now we just select the Y position, press F9 to ease it, go into the graph editor. And now if we zoom in a bit, so we want it to have the highest speed at the start, so the highest change in value. Therefore, we can drag this handle up. And then it will sort of hold in the air. So it'll stay still just a tiny bit when it's at the top. And then it, gravity will force it down again. So if we try and play this back, it sort of looks like this. And right now it looks pretty weird because we haven't really altered with the rotation at all. But if we go out of the graph editor, we can just hit R on the keyboard, add a keyframe to the rotation. And if we hold down our space bar, we can just drag out here so we can actually see the arrow. Now we want the rotation to roughly follow the motion path. So it's something like this. Then we just press shift and U to see all of our keyframes, go to the very end and just change the rotation. So it roughly follows the motion path as well. So now if we just drag it in the center here and try to play it back, it looks sort of like this. But we want the arrow to actually react when it hits the target and we also want the target to react to the arrow. So to do this, we'll first of all animate the arrow sort of wiggling back and forth just as it hits. So we'll go and just close down the arrow and now we'll create some guides to actually guide us on how to animate this. So the thing is that this will be following a decay curve, an exponential decay curve, and I'll show you just what that looks like. So if we go to layer, new, null object, we'll just click R as in rotation. And now we want to animate this rotation as a decay curve. So the first keyframe will be the highest rotation of the arrow. And then the last one will be what it settles at. So we, if we go to the rotation of the arrow, just click R, we can see that it ends at 23 degrees. So we can just type in 23 add it as a keyframe. And then we want this to roughly last nine keyframes. So go nine keyframes ahead by holding down command and control and clicking the right arrow key. And here we just want to add a keyframe again. And then at the start, we want the arrow to be rotated a bit. And we can just sort of alter the actual rotation of the arrow to get a feel of what's, what this will look like. So if we maybe go for plus five degrees, we can see that it it's rotated a bit and you have to imagine that this will sort of alter back and forth into this position as an arrow does when it hits something. So five degrees is maybe all right. Therefore we'll go plus five degrees here. And then we'll select the two keyframes, press F9 to easy ease. And now we'll be creating the exponential decay curve. So exponential essentially means that if it decays, it will decay very quickly at the start. So look something like this, and then towards the end, the change of value will be very small. 
So if we play this, you can't really see it because it's a null object, but it sort of changes quickly at the start and then it slows down. Now we also want to create an opposite of this. So we want to just maybe call this layer a positive and command control D to duplicate it and call it negative. And now if we press R as in rotation, we also want this to end at the 23 degrees and we can just put 23 at the start as well. But now we want this to go in the opposite direction. So imagine that the arrow sort of goes back and forth like this. So we want the extreme in the positive direction and the extreme in the negative direction. So this will essentially be minus five degrees. So just type that in, go into the graph editor, and now we have to adjust this curve. So it sort of matches the positive one. And you can see it's sort of the same. Maybe this has to be adjusted a bit more and that looks just fine. So now we want to use these graphs as reference. And the way we do this is by clicking this small button uh, on both of them. And now we just have to close down the layer and lock it and it will be visible in the graph editor, but we won't be able to edit it. So now if we go out of the graph editor, we'll go to the arrow and the rotation, and we'll actually just add nine keyframes. So after this one, we'll just be adding keyframes to every single one, like this. And if we just open the, unlock this and open the rotation, we can just sort of get a reference of how many keyframes that's supposed to be. So just keep adding the keyframes like this. Then we can select all of them and go into the graph editor. And now we have to get a better view of the graph editor. So we'll just drag this panel up, sort of zoom in like this. And now we have to match these keyframes. So the first one goes to the top, it goes to that extreme. And then the next one goes down to the bottom one. So you have to imagine that it sort of goes back and forth between this, which creates a nice motion. So just all the way, trying to adjust these and remember to have this auto zoom graph height selected. So when you go to the right, it zooms in. So it's easier to actually adjust these probably because towards the end, it will be like a minimal amount of degrees that you have to change it to. So sort of like this and the last one in here. And now if you go out of this and we actually just minimize this panel again, we can play this back. So as you can see, the arrow flies in and then it sort of reacts when it hits the target. So maybe you want this start to be a bit faster. It's a bit slow right now. Therefore you can just press U on the arrow, just select these keyframes, maybe drag them in one keyframe on each side. So goes a bit faster and you can see that arrow reacting. So now we want the target to react to this arrow and therefore we go into the target and we have to adjust this anchor point. So we select the anchor point tool, hold down command and control, just drag it so it snaps to the bottom middle. And here we'll open up the rotation, just zoom in a bit and go to the point where the arrow actually hits the target. Now we'll click the rotation, go roughly two keyframes ahead. And here we want the target to be sort of going backwards as it's reacting to the arrow. So maybe that's one degree. So just type in one, go another two or three keyframes ahead and add another keyframe. This time go to zero degrees. So now if we select these keyframes and press F9, go into the graph editor, we just have to actually turn off these, these decay curves because right now we don't really want them. So just go into the rotation, turn them off like this. Now we can select the target again. So at first we want this to happen really fast as it has just been impacted. Therefore the value change has to be really high at the start. Then we can just drag this out and it sort of has to ease out at the end. So if we play this back, you just see that it, the target reacts, but actually we want the arrow to stick to the target just as it hits it. And to do this, just go out of the graph editor, just close all of this down. We just parent the arrow to the target. So if we play this back, you can see that it is reacting. So now we maybe want a few more arrows to hit the target, but that's one thing we have to make sure of because when this arrow hits, 
We don't actually see the tip of the arrow because it's in this red circle. But if we place the arrow somewhere else, on the white for example, you would be able to see this and that would actually be inside of the target. Therefore, we can go to the arrow, open it up, and then we can open up the contents. And then I have this tip layer. So we just go to the point just before it hits the target, open this up and go into the transform. Here we can change the opacity just to 100% at a keyframe, one keyframe ahead, change it to 0%. So right now the tip disappears just as it hits the target. So if we close this down, we can actually pre-compose this arrow by right clicking and clicking pre-compose, just call it arrow. And if we want more arrows to actually enter, we just duplicate this layer by pressing command and control D. Then we can drag this out a bit and then we can go to where it hits and just sort of alter this position. So maybe we want this to hit here, duplicate it again. And maybe you want this one to hit up here. But right now we see there's a problem just as it enters, there's this tiny gap where you can actually see the arrow. So we just have to double click the composition. Then we go to composition, composition settings, and we just have to change the actual width of the composition. So just unlock the lock aspect ratio and just adjust the width. So we'll actually be able to see this in the main comp. So if we just zoom out and play this back, you can see that the arrows are flying as they should be. And they're also visible to the left, but there's actually two things that we need to fix. First of all, you can see that the target moves without the arrow and it's also only moving with the first arrow. So first of all, we can just select all three arrows and just parent them to the target itself. Then we can click the target and press U to see the rotation keyframes. We can just go to the point where the second arrow hits, so that's right here. Just copy and paste those keyframes. Go to the point where the third arrow hits, so right here, and just paste it again. Now if we play back, you can see that the target is actually reacting as it should be. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like down below. Also post a comment, tell me what I did good, what I could improve on, and also what I should be doing next. If you want to get notified when I upload future videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to turn on the notifications. If you create anything from this tutorial, make sure to share it with me on Instagram at Randolph. And that's all for now, till next time.